This is the most requested video I've ever got, which is how to make animations like Iman Gaji. Since Iman has been one of the fastest, if not the fastest growing YouTube channel on the self-improvement and make money online niches, everyone wants to know how to replicate his editing style. If you are one of these people, I highly recommend you watch this video all the way through because you're gonna learn three easy to use and versatile Iman Gaji style animations that will make you 10 times better at video editing. We'll be using Adobe After Effects for this tutorial, but if you use another video editor, you should be able to still replicate what I do as long as you have a good understanding of it. These animations are going to be in order of difficulty. So we'll start with the easiest one first. So first to create this effect, you can see that we're going to be creating all the composition settings and you can just copy the settings here. And then you pull out the page that you want to use for this effect. So whether it's like a Facebook, Twitter, an article, in this case, we're using my YouTube channel page. Now to get a good quality screenshot of it, what we use here is the go full page Google Chrome extension. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description. You can go ahead and download that. And once you have your screenshot, then press S to open up the scale property and change the screenshot to whatever size you want it to be. So if you hold down control, then you can get finer adjustments. Next, you can hold shift to make sure the screenshot moves in a straight line across the Y or X axis. To make sure it's directly in the center, create a null object. And a null object will always get created in the exact center of the composition. What we can do is use this to make sure that our screenshot is centered perfectly by linking it to the null object. The next part of the process is we're going to take all of the elements of the page and deconstruct them and then animate them individually. For this one, we picked 13 elements out of the page. We picked these eight videos up here and then the latest popular oldest buttons, all the tabs, my profile picture, my name and my description, then the subscribe button, which would be 13. You can pick as many or as little elements as you want to animate, but we chose 13. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate the layer 12 times, including the one that we already have. So that's 13 layers in total that we can each cut out using the square mask tool. And if you want to cut out a specific shape then you can definitely use the pen tool it doesn't have to be a square but it's just up to your preference so now you can see we're going on each layer and cutting out different elements on different layers now that we've isolated all of our elements we want to create a background based on the color of the website page you're using we're going to pick the youtube dark mode color so we create a new solid and we use the dropper tool to pick the youtube like grayish color for the background. Before we animate it, it's just good practice to fix all of the anchor points because right now they are offset. And if we try to do a scaling up animation, then it's gonna look really weird. So we need to center them. How you do this is you highlight all of the layers and then holding down control and double clicking the anchor point tool in the top left and it will center all of them. So as you probably saw in the final animation, all of the video thumbnails move up like this. But he selects all of the thumbnails and creates a keyframe by clicking on the keyframe button. And you can move all of these keyframes forward, depends how fast or slow you want the animation to go based on how far you move it forward. Then go back to frame zero and move them down holding shift so it doesn't go out of place and it should automatically create another keyframe. So now when you play it through, all of the thumbnails will animate up choose around like two other elements that you want to animate the position of and you want the starting frame to be the exact same time as your first element and you want the ending frame of the animation to be the exact same time because it will be easier in the graph editor and before we enter the graph editor highlight all the keyframes and press f9 this will already create an ease in animation and from there you can just adjust the handles to make it ease out more or ease in more depending on what you want so the animation so far will look something like this now a cool thing that we can do is once we've already animated all of those elements we can now stagger the timing of it so it looks different you can see each of the elements you can just go in and stagger each of them so they come in at different times now for the last three elements we're going to do a scaling up animation so same process whatever frame you want to start it you have all of those elements selected press s to open up the scale property and click on the keyframe button to create a keyframe and now you want to move it to wherever you want the animation to end. Keep your playhead on whatever frame you want the animation to start. Drag the scale to zero. Then do the same thing by highlighting all of the keyframes. Press F9 to ease the animation and move the handles to ease it out. And you can also stagger the timing of all these elements if you want as well. Now on top of everything, create an adjustment layer with the turbulent displace effect. I'll adjust the amount and the size to your preference. Under evolution options, just expand the menu and next to the word 
card random seed, you want to hold alt and click on the stopwatch. Now if you scroll down on the bottom, you should see something called an expression. You can go ahead and delete the text and type time asterisk and whatever number you want it to be. If you increase the number, then it will make the animation kind of faster. But if you decrease it, then it will make it slower. So for this one, we just did time times two, which will give it this looping animation. Finally, we're going to add in a paper texture. You can just find this if you look it up on YouTube. Decrease the opacity and set the blend mode to multiply. And here is the final effect. Okay, so first, obviously, you want to have your composition and you want to select the rounded rectangle tool and also click that button in the middle to make the background transparent and then select linear gradient for the fill options. Now you can just create your rounded rectangle by dragging. Quick note, you need to make sure that the bezier path is deselected before you create the shape and use the align column in the right to center it. Now you want to select the shape and press U to open up all the properties. This will allow you to change the roundness of the corners and also the color of the gradient. You want to make it a black and a gray gradient. You also want to change the direction of the gradient as well. So you can just drag to adjust and it should look something like this. While you have the shape selected, you want to press Control shift c to pre-compose the layer and just double click it to go into the composition. You wanna click the button right next to the transparency button. It's the region of interest, which will be our rectangle in this case. We want to almost perfectly outline it, but it doesn't have to be perfect, just pretty close to the edge and click composition and then click crop comp to region of interest so that it takes the resolution of the new cropped image. Next, you wanna drag in your PNG. Just look up hand holding diamond PNG and you should be able to easily find it. And you wanna pay attention this part because on toggle switches slash modes you want to make sure you can see this square and when you click on the square it will preserve the transparency that's what it's called because if you enable the square on the png it will not go outside of that original rectangle that we created if that makes sense next you want to create a text layer using the font called corbel it should come pre-installed with windows 10 so don't forget to fix the anchor point and to do that you just hold control and double click this anchor point button in the top left scale it down to fit and you can use the align features to center the text. Also, you want to highlight the word high and change that to light italic. Now you want to select the shape layer and press U to open up all the properties. And for the size, click that little link there to unlink the width and the height. Now click on the stopwatch next to size to create a size keyframe and move it about two seconds later in the timeline. Now set the height to zero. I select both keyframes and press F9 and that will just smooth everything out. And again, you want to click that same square on the text layer to preserve the transparency transparency so the text will always be inside of the rectangle. You can click the transparency button again. Now highlighting the size, roundness, and stroke width, you can click that graph to open up the graph editor. Now right click on the gray area and click edit speed graph. Just drag the handles and move the points like so and you should get a nice ease out animation. So we're almost done. Click U again to get out of the properties and you want to create a new adjustment layer. Just like the last time, the effect that you want to put on this adjustment layer is called turbulent displace. You can adjust the values and then again we want to go into evolution options on random C. Hold alt and click on the stopwatch and it will open up an expression. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to the last example because I talked about the same exact thing. In the last one we did time asterisk 2. In this one we're going to do time asterisk 3. And then you just want to adjust the settings to your liking and go back into the main composition. Disable the transparency view. And this is just so we can see the white stroke that we're going to be adding. Because now you want to right click on that layer under layer styles, add a stroke. Now double click into the pre-composition we had before. And you want to add the same paper effect that we did in the first example. But basically you just put it above everything else. Set the blend mode to multiply. And then also you want to click that square again to preserve the transparency so it doesn't go outside of the rectangle. And turn down the opacity. And that's the effect fully done. Drag this texture in the timeline. The link for that is going to be in the description. And again you want to do shift Control c to pre-compose it. And make sure you click on the first option called leave all attributes and comp one. This is important because it will adjust the composition to your background's resolution. 
Now double click to go into the pre-composition and you want to start cutting every four frames. And I know that it shows that the Z key is being clicked, but this is because the shortcut was changed. The default shortcut is Control Shift D. So you want to be pressing the down arrow to move forward a frame. This is just to create the animation of the background so you can do as many or as little cuts as you want. But for this we do about nine and then just delete the rest. You can use the keys B and N to set your in and out points. And then you want to right click and click trim comp to work area. On the first layer you want to add the motion tile effect and set the output width and height to 500 each. Now clicking the motion tile effect you want to press Control c to copy that and then paste it to all of the other layers. This will just make it so you can move the background wherever you want and it will mirror it so it never ends. And as you can see this part is kind of just up to you. On each layer just move it and maybe you can even rotate it and you'll create this animation. And you can press R to open up the rotation property. Now click on comp1 to return to the main composition. Now you want to right click on that composition that you made and go to time and enable time remapping. This will repeat it but it creates a black frame at the end of the first animation. So to fix that create a keyframe one frame before it turns black and delete the other keyframe next to it. Then hold alt and click on the stopwatch and it will open up the expression. And instead of what it already has, you can just type loop out and opening and ending parentheses. This will just create a continuous loop so you don't have to worry about doing it manually. After that, add a tint effect on the composition and also add a curves effect. Drag the middle down like that so it creates more contrast. Okay, so this is the part where everyone might not be able to follow exactly, but there's always workarounds that you can do. So to create the pyramid, there's multiple ways that you can do it, but the way that it's done here is it was created from scratch, but there are many pages that could give you vectors for Adobe Illustrator. The reason why we're using Illustrator is because it works with vectors, meaning that when you zoom in, stuff doesn't get pixelated. But if you don't have this program, I recommend going in the description and I left a PNG of a pyramid like this that you can use. And to separate the layers, I would use just any photo editing software. It could be a free one like Pixlr or Photoshop. Just keep in mind that it's not going to be at the same quality as this one. Now there's also this plugin for Adobe Illustrator called Overlord, which allows you to transfer the layers straight from Adobe Illustrator to Adobe After Effects. So you can either download that plugin, but I think there's also a couple of other ways that you can do it. Once you have all of your pyramid layers, you want to highlight all of the layers and then link it to a null object that you're gonna create. Linking it to the null object will just make it so when you scale it, it keeps the same shape and distribution. Now you can scale your pyramid up and create a new black solid. On this layer, you wanna add the effect CC jaws and adjust the completion and height like so to create these black bars. Now you see we need to scale the pyramid down a little bit. And once you got it to a size that you like, you can delete the null object. Now select all of the layers of the pyramid and press P to open up the position property and click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe for all of the layers. And you want to move this to where you want the animation to end. We move it to like one and a half seconds and we just lock the black bar so we don't mess with it. Now where you want the animation to start, go ahead and drag all of the pyramid layers up or to the side depending on what you want the animation to be. And make sure you hold shift so all of the layers go in a straight line. With all of the keyframes selected, press F9 to smooth everything out. And then you can go ahead and open the graph editor. Also adjust the handles to create an ease in effect. Then you can stagger the timing of each layer to create a smoother looking animation. After that, create a text node. You want to use VP pixel font just like we did in the first example. Link for that is in the description. Most importantly, you want to link it to the top layer as well. You can also move it under the black solid layer. So now when you link it to the top layer, it will follow the exact position of it as well. And also don't forget to fix the anchor point of the text. Hold control and double click on the anchor point button to fix that and you can adjust the size to your liking. Now on top of all of that, you wanna create a new null object and position it right where the 1% is because we're going to do a zoom in animation. You want to highlight all of the pyramid layers and link it to that null object. Press U to show all of the keyframes. In this case, it's just the position and the scale. Create a keyframe for both of them and make sure this is after the animation that we just made. And then like two seconds after, Go ahead and zoom in and adjust the position so it zooms in on the 1%. And also the same process, you want to highlight both of the keyframes. Press F9 to smooth everything out. Adjust the handles to create a ease in and ease out animation. Now you'll have an animation like this. And also if you want, you can put your playhead before the animation starts. 
and link the texture background to the null object as well so it also zooms in. Once that's all done, you can create an adjustment layer with the turbulent displace effect. Again, it's the same thing as we did with the last two effects, so you can go to those effects for the details. But basically, you just want to adjust the amount and the size. Go to Evolution Options, hold Alt and click on the stopwatch next to Random Seed. And for this one, we're also going to do Time Asterisk 3. And of course, you can move the adjustment layer below the black solid so it doesn't affect anything else. And on top of that, we want to add the paper. Just like we did for the other two effects is the same exact process. So just changing the blend mode to multiply and turning down the opacity. And that is the final effect. If you want this type of editing on your channel and you're a coach, consultant, or entrepreneur, check out how we can run your YouTube channel done for you. For anyone else who's trying to improve their editing, you can find two links in the description to Artlist and Motion Array, which will give you the best copyright-free music, sound effects, stock footage, and drag and drop templates. Other than that, feel free to check out this video that I made on editing like Iman Gaji in DaVinci Resolve.